Welcome back to the Church of Obelisk. My name is Yon. Today I'm bringing you a big, big guide on Lone Druid. This video will teach you everything you need to know to start playing Lone Druids. So we're going to go over item builds, skill builds. We're going to go over how to micro your hero and the bear. How you're supposed to last hit, how you're supposed to lane, what your game plan is. How the game plan differs depending on your item build and your position. And we're going to be covering both a mid lone druid and a safe lane lone druid. But before we start with that, we'll go into why you actually would want to play lone druid. So lone druid actually has a fairly good win rate. You know, its win rate is well over 50% most of the time. Also in different brackets, he's also doing fairly well. So when the hero is actually picked, he does quite well. However, his pick rate is very, very low. One of the least picked heroes in the entire game. And also one of the handful of heroes that was not picked at all at CI. He's not a hero that fits into every game. And to be honest, at the moment he's not particularly strong. But he's okay. And just the fact that he's almost never picked and was never picked at CI at all. Indicates that he's almost certainly going to get buffed in the near future. If not at the immediate uh, post-TI patch, then uh, definitely at the bigger patch that usually comes out like a month or two after TI. So if you get good at this hero right now, you're going to be ready for when the hero is actually going to be strong, which in all likelihood is going to be soon. So this is a perfect time to actually learn the hero because if you start learning the hero after everyone only knows it's going to be broken, then it's going to get uh, nerfed very soon and you don't actually get to enjoy playing the hero for very long. But the most important ability for Lone Druid obviously is his uh, Spirit Bear. This summons a bear which has a fairly low base stats as far as the attacks go, but is very, very tanky. And also, whenever you level up, your bear actually gets 5 bonus damage and also a little bit of bonus HP. So this bear is just going to get stronger and stronger throughout the course of the game. However, Lone Druid is not really here that scales super well into the late game. So really his uh, biggest strength lie in the mid game. Now this bear does have 6 item slots so we can theoretically run around with 12 items in your main inventory plus you know uh, you have your backpacks, you have your, your shard, your agonims, and so on. So you can um, get this 12-slotted uh, dream, but it is for the most part a dream. Even if you do get this 12-slot, uh, Lone Druid still is not that great in the late game. And you're basically never going to get there because Lone Druid is a hero that's both very good at ending games. So if you're ahead in the game, you typically can, can end the game fairly well. But if you're behind, it's also very easy to lose the game because... Whenever you die without a resummon, you're pretty much completely useless, even if you do have buyback. So it's also easy to lose games as Lone Druid. So he tends to be a bit more of a snowball-y kind of hero. So don't uh, try to look towards that uh, 12 slot. Uh, the, your game plan should be to assert dominance in the mid game. Your second ability is Spirit Link. So you take some damage. This means that your bear is going to heal you up again. So uh, you get a uh, 65% life steal. However, it only works uh, one way around. So you attacking is not going to heal up your bear. Only the bear attacking is going to heal up you. And, and on top of that, it also gives you a bunch of extra attack speed to both the hero and your bear. Your third ability is Savage Roar, which causes nearby enemies to be feared. And this makes them unable to do anything except to run away. They can't use items, they can't use spells, and they can't react in any way. It does not go through BKB, and it also only casts around the unit that, that uh, casts it. So we cast it on either hero or the bear, and it only works on one of those two, and then it goes in cooldown for both. So if the bear casts it, it's also going to be in cooldown for the hero, and uh, vice versa. However, once uh, you get the shard, then it actually casts it around both units. So if I cast it here, it's still going to fear the ruby because it's near the bear. And then finally, ultimate makes you into a big old bear. It lasts for 40 seconds by default and has a 100 second cooldown. So a decent amount of uptime. And this just uh, makes it so you have lots of bonus HP and armor. 
You also get the passive abilities from uh, from the bear. You get demolish and entangling glass. You get uh, some magic resistance and uh, building damage, and uh, you also get to entangle people with your right clicks. It's not going to be super relevant, but uh, mostly this is just going to make you much much more tanky. And speaking of those abilities, the bear also has them. Demolish gives him 33% spell resistance, which is a bit more than heroes have. Heroes have 25% by default. And you get bonus damage against buildings up to 40% and uh, um, for the hero that goes up to 60%. Then we have the Entangling Clause, which is just a chance to proc and hit. That's uh, going to root the enemy. However, rooted enemies can still cast spells, they can still attack. Uh, so it only stops them from moving. Then finally we have the return, which is a three second channel, and then the bear's gonna teleport to the current location of the druid. Alright, so that's all the abilities. Now let's jump into the actual skill builds. So the skill build is uh, sometimes fairly straightforward. This is probably the most common skill build you're gonna use, but there's a lot of variety. So pretty much always you're gonna max out the summon spirit bear right away and sometimes you may want to uh, put put off like a point here you might uh, for example uh, put a point into spirit link at three so you get a double spirit link and only one bear this allows you to get some more sustaining lane if you're running out of region but most of the time you're just going to max out the spirit bear right away and then spirit link is uh, your like farming spell a uh, spell that increases your dps but uh, if you need some extra safety, you can also put uh, a point in Savage Draw or True Form earlier. So if you're, for example, in some sort of lane where you're likely to get uh, bursted with an enemy's ultimate, like if you're laning against a Queen of Pain or a Lina, you might want to put a point into the ultimate at 6, so you can just uh, cast your ultimate when they go on you and uh, be you know, fairly safe because you have so much HP. And Savage Draw as well is also a nice safety spell also nice to have a point in seven draw early on but every point you put in these abilities just means you're going to be farming slower and you're going to have less sustain from spirit link so these first couple of levels are kind of flexible but then after 12 it's all fairly determinative so we, of course you want to max out true form and seven draw is always going to be maxed out last as we said you could put like a point here earlier but maxing it is, is not as strong so you definitely want to max it last and then as far as talents go, the level 10 talent can also be delayed a little bit, but you know, this, you can also just take it at 10 right away. This is going to be 200 health. This is almost always better than the, the spirit by movement speed. Uh, this makes you so much less likely to get bursted. And at 15, nowadays, we pretty much always go for Savage Draw cooldown talent. This just makes Savage Draw so much stronger. It, it uh, decreases, decreases the cooldown from 20 to 10, which is a huge deal. 8 armor would also be really nice, but uh, this one is just much, much stronger in almost all cases. Then level 20 and 25, it's a bit more of a difficult choice. So these talents come in pairs. You have the entanglement cooldown, goes well together with the uh, spirit bear attack time. So this just means you're going to be right clicking faster and also procking more entangles. So this is especially good if you're ahead in the game. But uh, I would say most of the time it's slightly better to go for the other two talents. The minus 50 second true form cooldown and the plus 1000 true form spirit bear and, uh, and hero health. So this means that uh, both the hero and your bear when you're in, in uh, true form will get this, this plus 1000 HP which is actually a huge deal and especially if you have this talent. So with this talent the true form goes down to a 50 second cooldown so you're gonna have 40 second uptime with 50 second cooldown which means you know you're almost always gonna be in true form and almost always gonna have that plus 1000 health on, on, on top of the uh, the already 1500 hp that you're getting you're just gonna be running around with like casual 5k hp without even many items now for the items so starting item build that i like to go for is to get uh, a tango a quelling blade on both the hero and the bear because you have lots of slots available on your hero you might as well fill them up with some stuff like a quelling blade a couple of branches 
uh, just for some extra efficiency in the landing phase. You can also eat some of these branches if you need extra region, or you can make them into a, into a wand if you need to. And this is going to help us out in the early game because London has very poor base stats. So any sort of extra stats you can get is going to help out in the landing phase. And this is very cheap and efficient. And then we're going to have, of course, scroll bed for the bear and a town portal scroll for the bear. You don't have to start with this, but getting it from the courier is kind of a hassle because you have to manually drop the town portal scroll into the bear's inventory. You can't use courier hotkeys for that. So it's just easier to just start with the town portal scroll. And what this allows us to do is when the bear is injured, we can just TP it home, pick up some items along the way, and then uh, teleport back to the hero. So we can just sort of fully heat up the bear at the cost of just 100 gold. So that's a pretty good deal. And I like what the interface says here. It's actually exactly uh, 600 gold. So you can't go for the exact item build if you lose some gold in the picking phase. In that case, you can just uh, replace two of those branches um, with a fairy fire, for example. That's fine as well. In the laning phase, typically the first item you want to get is either a blightstone. Just a very value item on this uh, right clicking hero. Or we can go for a Blades of Attack, which is then going to build into Phase Boots. So these are typically the, the two first purchases, and then you just complete the Phase Boots. If you're going to lane where you're going to be right clicking the enemy with your bear a lot, if this is mostly in the case in this melee uh, course, then you want to get an Old Venom. But if you're not in that kind of lane, you want to hold on a little bit, hold off a little bit on that Old Venom, but still get it eventually because. It's just a very high value item on the bear. In lanes where you're not going to be able to right click your opponent a lot, you probably wait with the Uber Venom until you finish the face boots and the Blightstone, and then still buy it. Uh, if you're having a really bad game, you can skip the Uber Venom. It's more like an aggressive item, so if you can't be aggressive, Uber Venom is not uh, very useful. Also, of course, doesn't help you farm. Then also, Magic Stick is a bit situational. Usually, you want this at some point, but you don't, you don't have to go for it, but if you're in some sort of lane where there's lots of spam coming out, you're learning against like a Zeus or Bristleback or something like that, uh, definitely get an early stick. And after these early game items, which you pretty much always want to buy, the game opens up a bit and there's like different uh, approaches you can take. And I've sketched out here some of the two main builds that uh, are strong right now. It's not an exhaustive list. It's not like these are the only item builds that are good, but this is probably like the two main routes you can go for. The first, I've labeled this an aggressive build. This is a Deso build, but you want to go for Mask of Madness first, usually, because the problem with this Deso build is you're not getting any attack speed. So Mask of Madness helps out there. But currently, Mask of Madness is not the greatest item on the Spirit Bear. Just because you're really struggling with armor already, so it can be a bit problematic to go for Mask of Madness. But with the Stessu build, I think it's still worth it. I've seen Kwaikwa, who's probably right now the best laundry player in the world, often skipping Mask of Madness entirely. But I feel like in this build, you still want to get, from, get this Mask of Madness. Then at some point, you want to get Brown Boots for your hero. So it's not like super essential, but it definitely helps out a lot. This makes you more mobile during fights. A thing you can do when you're walking longer distances is you can transfer your face boots from the bear to the hero when you don't have boots yet. And this way you can sort of get to the destination slightly faster. But at some point I think it's uh, definitely worthwhile just to invest in brown boots for your hero. It's not that expensive. You can get this like after the Mask of Madness or even after the Desolator, just at some point. And that's just going to help you position yourself better in fights and so on. And then this combination of Mask of Madness, Desolator just allows you to deal a huge amount of single target damage. It's very good against buildings. And this is sort of the standard high tempo build you want to go for. Orb of Corrosion, surprisingly, stacks with Desolator. But Desolator does not stack with Blightstone. So... When you're going for Desolator, getting this extra Orb of Corrosion as a follow-up uh, can be quite nice. And then Aghanim Shard is incredibly powerful. What the Shard does in Laundry Roots is upgrade Savage Roar. And now it casts around both your main hero and the bear, as we talked about already. But in addition, it also casts around 
both run the main hero and the bear a buff that gives 20% movement speed and 60 attack speed for 5 seconds. So it's kind of like a stronger version of a drum charge. And you can see if I cast it here, it's also going to upgrade this Ventral Spirit and my bear. So this is an incredibly powerful ability and with the level 15 talent, it's only going to have 10 second cooldown. So you basically get 50% uptime on this. So this is always worthwhile getting. And then a very natural follow-up here for this build is, is AC. AC, of course, gives you attack speed, which you're kind of lacking with this build. Gives some extra armor, because Lone Red likes armor, and also to compensate for Mask of Madness. And also minus armor, which works really well with Desolator, so this is just like the perfect item for this build. And then Skull Basher, also just a very strong Raikki item, gives you a decent amount of damage and some lockdown, so incredibly strong when you have a good amount of attack speed. You can also get the Basher before the AC, it sort of depends a bit on the game uh, which one you go for first. The AC first, of course, a bit more expensive, but it's also just better than in team fights. Well, this is better if you just need some more lockdown or if you need like, some sort of way of uh, cancelling a um, BKB TP or things like Spin TP or a Rage TP if you're playing in certain kinds of heroes. And then we have the second build, which I've labeled the farming build. It's still like a, not, not like a very greedy build or anything like that, but you're going to be farming a bit more with this build. And it's a bit more capable of going to the later stages of the game, whereas this one is like a little bit more all in ish. So here the key item is uh, Mjolnir. You just go for Maelstrom and then just straight into Mjolnir. This is a great farming item, obviously. Works great in the bear. Gives us a good amount of attack speed, which we like. Gives us a way of uh, clearing waves faster. And just speeds up our farm enormously. And also the passive can be quite strong. You can even just uh, cast the passive on the bear and just have it tank a creep wave and uh, push it out while the hero is not nearby. Things like that you can do. And yeah, it's just an item that's sort of like a very complete damage item. It gives you some attack speed, some damage, some AoE. It just sort of solves all your problems. But the problem compared to Desolator is that it doesn't have nearly as much building damage. So your objective taking power is going to decrease with this build, but it just scales better, better farming. Still want boots with this spear build. Agnum Shot is still great with this build. And then, yeah, Basher. Still, for the same reason that Basher is good here, it's also good here. And then AC, again, it's just a good item. It's, it's, not, it's not quite as good of an item here as it is in the Desa build, but you still probably want to go for it. If not, if you're not going for AC, you could also instead go for a uh, Moonshot. That's uh, also an option. Um, Moonshot is like a bit more of a sort of selfish option, whereas this one obviously also helps out the rest of your team. And it's also definitely more aggressive option but uh, both of them are good options to go for here so this is like these are sort of like fairly fixed two two options to go for you can also to some extent mix and match them so in some games you, games you might want to open up the desolator to just sort of put a lot of pressure on the enemy team like for example if you're playing as the phantom lancer really what you want is to exploit the phase where he's still weak and take as many of his towers as possible take all the objectives and for that Desso is great but then if you're going late against Phantom Lancer you just need some AoE so then you can just go for open Desolator and then go for the Mjolnir so you can take objectives early but then also have some way of dealing with this Illus but for the most part you're just going to be sticking with one of these two builds another question is which build do you go for? And there's a couple of different considerations here. So first of all, the aggressive build uh, tends to be a bit better if you're playing position 2. Especially if you have some sort of greedy carry, like if you have an anti-mage or something as, a, as you carry. There's not going to be as much space under the map. You're going to have to have to fight, to fight earlier, so probably lean more towards aggressive build. Whereas if you're playing position 1 or you're playing post 2, but your 1 is also sort of fairly a fighting carry, you might want to go for the more farming build. Also, another consideration is uh, the kind of skill bracket you're playing in. So, the higher the skill level, the shorter the games typically are going to be. So, in lower level games, people are just not very good at taking objectives. So, games tend to drag on for longer. And there, going for this Mjolnir build might be a bit stronger. 
Also, obviously, considerations like uh, what kind of furious am I facing? How much do they fear physical damage? How much magic damage? So if you're playing against a lifestealer, for example, he's not really going to be very afraid of uh, Mjolnir because it's going to be magic immune for a good portion of the fight. Whereas if you're playing against, say, a Terror Blade, well, he has so much armor that he doesn't really care about Desolator. So against him, uh, Mjolnir might be the stronger choice. Next, we'll talk about the items you go for after you've finished all of these uh, two main builds. So first of all, if you don't have Orb of Corrosion yet, now might be a good time to go for it. You don't want to get this item in the early game because it doesn't give you much of an upgrade over just Blightstone plus over Venom. And it's quite a bit of gold to spend on basically just like one extra armor reduction. You also get some extra health, but you don't really care about that too much. So this is more an item you get if you're running out of slots, because it just combines these two very useful items into one. So this is more later um, stage kind of item to go for. Or if you go for Desolator build, then you get it after Desolator, because it just stacks with that armor reduction, and it's just very efficient. Next, we have MKB, but obviously that's the item we're going to go for if you're facing evasion. If you're facing some very heavy evasion, you might even just... Uh, rush this MKB so you go basically this uh, farming build but you replace this Mjolnir with a Monkey King bar. MKB is a pretty good build up as well so you just get these two fairly cheap items get some good value in the early game. Then we have Nullifier which is a somewhat situational item but a very strong item that really fits well onto the Spirit Bear. This is the item you go to deal with heroes that buy defensive items and especially the biggest item you're worried about is Ghost Scepter. You can just dispel Ghost Scepter with this item and also preemptively cast it because it dispels, it keeps dispelling over the um, five second duration. So uh, they, they won't be able to Ghost Scepter during those five seconds. So this is a great item, also works against Yules, it works against uh, Glimmer Capes, all these kinds of items. Uh, also works uh, even against Eon Disk. So this is just a, a great item to go for, and it's, it's often an item you go for after uh, completing one of these main builds. Then we have Moonshot, which is a very strong item on the bear, because we really want attack speed on this hero. So Moonshot is a great item to go for. You're typically not gonna almost ever consume the Moonshot, because we have 12 slots to fill, so we're not really running out of slots. So we just buy this Moonshot just to have it in an inventory. But if, like, you're playing together with uh, the core who's already finished farming, like, let's say you're playing with uh, some sort of hero that's, like, really good at farming, like a, like TB or Naga or something or an Anti-Mage, and they've already finished farming, they've already completed all the items they need, then it's actually really good to get them to buy a Muncha for your bear. Next, we have BKB. Obviously, just a standard item on pretty much any, any core. If there's too much disable... Your bear is not really able to get out his damage in the fight. Buy him a BKB. You don't like to do it, but uh, it's still a great item to go for if there's uh, too much disable in the enemy lineup. Then we have Abyssal Blade, like an upgrade to Skull Basher. You know, it's it's not an item you want to rush for, but uh, you know, eventually if you have Skull Basher, and which you usually do, you want to eventually upgrade it to Abyssal. Then we have Silver Edge, which is not really an item most people think about when they think about uh, the Spirit Bear. But it's actually pretty decent. Like it, it gives you damage and attack speed, which is great. That's what you want on the bear. And, you know, you can break passives, which is nice. Of course, this item is uh, has a bit of a limited use because you always kind of need to be around your hero to actually attack. But especially if you've bought an Aghanim Scepter already, then Silver Edge becomes a much stronger option. It helps greatly with like finding pickoffs or with like just uh, split pushing, ratting, because it has so much building damage. Uh, you can even backdoor buildings if you've farmed enough. So this is a uh, pretty strong option. And then we have Blade Mail, which also not really an item people, most people think about when they think about Lone Druid. But it actually gives some pretty nifty stuff. Like it gives you damage and armor, which is great stats on, on the bear. And your bear's going to be taking lots of damage. He's going to be in the, in the front lines taking hits. So both the passive and the active is actually quite kind of useful. Uh, problem, of course, it's a bit of a smaller item that doesn't uh, really scale too well. There's no upgrade to blade mail. 
but it's definitely an item to watch out for especially if you're playing against like lots of aoe damage you're uh worried about that you can just buy a blade mail and it's just uh and it's especially like a good a good item in a game where you're not really all that fond. So this is like an item that scales with your opponent's damage. So it's it's a great item in a losing game. So this is what the main items you want to go for. Then last category is luxury items. This is basically stuff you go for after your bear six slot. Like your bear is gonna have like face boots plus like five good items, five big items. Then you can think about all of this stuff. Obviously, Aghanim Scepter allows your bear to be independent of you, can, can attack anywhere on the map, and also means that if your hero dies, your bear doesn't die. So, this is not an item you're going to go for in the early game, pretty much ever. This is not an item you're going to go for if you're not 6 slotted yet. There's some very rare exceptions where you just have to go for the rat split push kind of build, but this is pretty much almost always just a luxury late game kind of item. Next, you have the Solar Crest, which is a great item to have in your team. If you're playing Lone Druid, you really should have a support or an offense in your team that's buying the Solar Crest, because it's such a good item to put on the bear. But um, if they're not buying it, you can buy it yourself. And especially like it's, if it's going very late game, uh, you just get the Solar Crest, just keep spamming it on your bear. It's a great amount of attack speed, armor, movement speed, all those sort of things that the uh, Lone Druid Spirit Bear loves to have. So if you have this in late game, it just means that your supports can now use a Solar Crest on uh, another core. Uh, so that's a great late game addition. Obviously, Boots of Travel, you know, why not if you have the money? Refresher Orb is great to get an extra life on the bear. So yeah, it's a very expensive item, so don't get this if you're not 6 stars on the bear yet, but in a late game, it can work wonders. You can also go for something simple like a Vlad's. If you don't have a Vlad's on your team yet, you know, why not if you have the slots and you have the money in a late game, lifesteal, bonus damage, it's not bad. And then, you know, Scythe. If you have a lot of money, why not buy a Scythe? This, is, this item is always going to be good in a late game. Right, and your Lotus Orb, uh, similar thing, you know, just spam this on your bear or other cores. You know, this, you can never have too many Lotuses on your team, so this is also a nice little luxury item to go for. As far as neutral items go, for the bear, you're just looking for damage, attack speed, armor pretty much. Those are the stats you care about mostly on the Lone Druid. Uh, also, like movement speed is kind of nice on the bear, but you know, it's not that essential so. For the bear, you want like broom handle in the first category and um, like chip vest is like okay on the bear. In tier 2 on the bear, you want brigand's blade, this one is the best, lots of DPS there. And dragon scale is also okay, the armor is nice, quicksilver amulet is, is decent, attack speed, movement speed, why not? But it's not, not uh, amazing. And if there's like no good items dropping, you can even put something like a Grove Bow on the bag. It's still attack speed, and you know the magic resistance reduction has you know, some value, so you know uh, it's it's okay if there's something better. Tier three, there's lots of good items for the bear. The three best ones are just these right click items: Mindbreaker, Titan Sliver, and Paladin Sword. Both of the three is, uh, three are excellent. I think Mindbreaker is probably the strongest. Followed by Paladin Sword and Titan Sliver probably last, but they're all three great items to go for. You could also go for like a Blast Rig or an Elven Tunic or Cloak of Flames is also decent alternatives. In uh, Tier 4, we have uh, most importantly the Penta Edge Sword and then closely followed by the Leveler. Both these items are great for our bear, but uh, in some cases Witch Bane might also be actually a decent item. What this does is it's 4% pure damage based on the enemy's the max mana. So if you're hitting like a hero with a 2000 mana, this is 80 bonus pure damage, which is amazing. But you have to keep in mind that this does not work against buildings and it doesn't do very much against creeps. So it's just specifically a hero killing thing. But then it also has this active where you can uh, dispel an enemy or an ally every 20 seconds, you know. Why not? But this is more like a situational kind of item. 
Then in tier 5, there's also some great items there. Obviously, there's the Sticky and Desolator and the Pirate Hat, a huge DPS boost. But those are always great. Pirate Hat is actually especially great on Lone Druid because uh, you always have some use for these extra bounty runes. Because at the point you get tier 5 items, a lot of like position 1 and 2 heroes are already going to be more or less finished farming. So you're not going to get much extra value out of gold. But not so for Lone Druid because you have 12 slots, you're never really finished farming. It's always great to get those uh, bounty runes. And you get those every 40 seconds. So that's actually a huge um, GPM boost for your entire team. This is a great item to get your hands on. But then also Force Boots, a great item as well. You get uh, to have boots and um, that way it sort of free up an extra item slot on your bear. So that is great. And the other ones are not are not that amazing. Like X Machina, too many armor. Okay, that that's that's fine. But uh, it's probably better heroes to give those kinds of items to. And for the main hero, it doesn't really matter too much what kind of neutral items you have. Just sort of something that gives some extra value. Like some stat items are fine in the early game. You know, trust your shovel. Why not pick up some stuff? And you know, tier two maybe like a ring of Aquina. Get some. Get some aura here or like some extra tankiness dragon scale or like vambrace people's gift not get bursted why not same for essence ring you know you can you can buy these items or get these items are fine or like bull whip whip your band to shape why not and tier three it's nice to have this quickening charm for the cooldown reduction so you get the bear back earlier but this also in general is a very strong item so some of your teammates can have a better value for this but this for example enchanted quiver is great Lots of bonus DPS added in there, and yeah, why not? This is just making use of the fact that you can just have two neutral items on this hero. Tier 4 for your main hero, there's again a couple of decent ones, uh, like Aesthetics Cap, you know, just some extra tankiness, why not? Uh, even more cooldown reduction, it's not bad. You can uh, get something like a Stormcrafter, just sort of dispel yourself uh, in, in case you need that, or just Victor's Cloak, extra survivability, or just even carry a telescope. You know, you're not going to really make much use of it yourself, but it's going to help out your team, so why not? Because, like, your main hero is really a support. Like, you, have, you when playing Lone Druid, you can think of it as, like, you're playing, like, a support and a carry in, in one hero. So you want more like support items on your hero and then more the carry items on the bear. So a lot of the time you might not actually even want to claim a second tier 5 item. But if you do get one, something like uh, Book of the Dead is great. Because you know the, the strength of these necro units does not depend on the items that your hero has. You can run around with an empty inventory plus Book of the Dead. It's still going to be great. Uh, save Book of Shadows, you know, the Night Vision attributes not that important, but... Just every 8 seconds you can save someone, or just like remove an, an enemy from the fight for a little bit. So that's um, fairly useful. And you know, like something like Arcanist's armor, why not? It's an aura, you know. Why not carry this around? But really the most important part is just get a good item on the bear. Alright, let's talk a bit about laning. So Lone Druid is almost always going to be position 1 or 2, so you stay lane or mid lane. Midland probably pretty strong, I would say. But uh, safe lane also can work perfectly fine. The good thing about Lone as a safe laner is that he's fairly independent. He doesn't need that much help from the support. So he has some sort of support that wants to rotate a bit. That's fine. Or support that wants to uh, go and make some stacks or something. You're not really a good stack farm on Lone Druid. But uh, if you have like a, a mid laner that can farm stacks well. Like a Kunkka or a Tia or something. Can be quite valuable to have your support just stack a bit. But the uh, big challenge you're facing with Lone Druid and Stun is that you have um, pretty shitty base stats. So you only have 40 base damage on the hero and 20 on the bear at the start. So having this double quelling blade helps a lot to get last hits. And then as, as you level up, your bear is going to get more damage. So um, last hitting, of course, becomes easier and easier. But uh, the general idea here with last hitting is you want to make sure that your hero and bear uh, line up their attacks so they land at the same time. So one way of doing this is just to go close here and 
Make sure that both units are facing the creep before you go for the last hit or the deny. And then the attacks are going to land at roughly the same uh, time. Another way of doing this is walking slightly past the unit with your bear. And then it's going to arrive at roughly the same time because you have the turn animation combined with uh, the distance that your hero's main attack has to travel. And then they're going to align, roughly speaking. It's not like a perfect science, uh, but uh, these two um, techniques will help you to get most last hits. Because if you combine your main hero's damage and your bass damage, with all the quelling blades and so on, you actually have very high last hit damage. But if they, these attacks arrive at not at the same time, then enemy heroes or even creeps can just sort of hit in between those two hits and then you're gonna have a very, a very hard time actually getting those last hits. A neat trick you can use in the lane is to hold off on leveling up your spirit bear because what actually happens when you level up the spirit bear is your old bear dies and is replaced by a new bear with you know the same items obviously the same percentage of HP and so on but it's gonna be a new bear it's, it's gonna replace any sort of buffs or debuffs the bear had on him and it's also gonna reset the cooldowns for the bear specifically the entangling clause cooldown so if you entangle someone you can level up the bear and uh, then you can entangle them right away again let's demonstrate this here i've saved a point here and let's wait for entangle and now we can entangle right away again so we've got this double entangle here which can often lead to a kill in lane it also works to remove any sort of negative effects, even stuns that are dis not dispellable, anything like that, you can remove. So I level up my bear and he's instantly no longer stunned, has no, no longer has that debuff from Faith Bolt, and he's fine. It even works against completely undispellable stuff like Doom. You can still um, dispel it uh, by just leveling up the bear. Obviously this is only something that's not going to work in the long term, it's only an early game. Then you can use it a couple of times, but if you're landing against, say, like a Queen of Pain, uh, you can like dodge dagger with this or dispel dagger with this, things like that. And typically, in the landing stage, your goal is just to get as much farm as possible, get last hits and denies, and of course, harass your opponents. You have a lot of uh, sustain on this hero, which is great. And sometimes you can just uh, run people down with your attending gloss and so on. But. For the most part the goal should just be to farm and uh, get those item timings because Lone Druid is a very item dependent hero if you're behind the item timings you're not going to do well in the game and just getting those items is more important than like killing the enemy laner once or something but generally speaking when you're in the mid lane your game plan should be that you're just farming your lane and trying to get your items and you're not really rotating much with this hero most just stay in the lane and if you, the enemy mid uh, rotates then you go for the tower use that time when the enemy mid lane is not here just take down the tower as fast as possible but if you just try to like teleport after them try to fight there it's not gonna do, uh, go as well so you just wanna get that tower and then once the tower is down then you go and run it to another lane but you sort of want to be the the one that that's the active not reactive so typically you know, kill the mid, mid tower if you can then typically you rotate to to the uh, off lane but that's usually the more important tower to take You're taking the tower in your safe lane just has less value especially if you're playing on the radiant this is the least valuable tower in the entire game of dota uh, if you're playing on uh, on dire taking out this tower is a little bit more impactful because it's near Roshan, but still, even if you don't die, you still want to take out this tower first, usually because it's just easier. This is a very objective based hero, especially if you're going for this Desolator build. So, you want to take down other towers, and you're also actually really good at Roshan with this hero. So, a great thing you can actually do is you can ank Roshan with your main hero because your bear is going to heal you up. Like, look at this. There's not even, like, huge items, anything like that. Just, like, uh, Mask of Madness, Desolator. I'm not even using Mask of Madness. But Roshan can actually help me. Uh, partly it's also because it's only 4 minutes. So usually Roshan, this um, stage of the game, is going to be, be hitting a bit harder. But, um, so usually not going to region up in, in, entirely. But still, you can take uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, punishment here from Roshan. 
and uh, you can even solo Roche, even though it's going to be rather slow. And this is not usually going as fast as this because Roshan gets stronger over time, obviously. And it's just a demo lobby with where I'm just at the four minute mark. But yeah, Lone Druid, a good Rosha, not a great Aegis carrier though. So typically you want to have your one of your other cores uh, get the Aegis because, you know, yeah, it means you can't get busted and so on, but uh, usually it's it's better to have someone else uh, carry the Aegis. How do I actually control Londra? So you definitely want to have some sort of control group or um, you want to use uh, all, all units, whatever is more comfortable with you. I have both. I have a control group one for my uh, hero and the bear. And if I have extra control group just for the bear, your bear wants to do stuff on his own. And then, of course, I also have a key for just my hero, which for me is F1. You can just use whatever setup is most comfortable for you. And I, I do recommend having sort of distinction between like all units selected and uh, uh, just uh, your your hero and the bear. So if you get like an illusion rune or something, uh, you can go ahead and uh, control those uh, separately. I don't have an illusion rune right now, but let's just say for some reason I have a manta. So I have manta illusions, then I'll have you know F2 if I want to control everything, but then also. I have just one if I just want to control my hero and the bear while well, the illusion is split pushing somewhere else, let's say. And you might also put those in the control group so you have um, extra control group for those illusions um, so you can use them more effectively. Once you have your shards, you can also sort of just spam this thing out as long as you have enough mana. You can just keep casting this even when just moving around the map. It's like a super drum judge and only has 10 second cooldown. So I'll just use this a lot once you have the shard. And obviously it's, it's great to have in team fights. Speaking of team fights, whenever there's any sort of team fight starting, you want to press true form right away. This is not just the HP, it's also all the armor and um, magic assist it gives you. So you just want to use this at the start of the fight. You don't want to get caught out and burst or anything like that. So just press this and immediately you're going to be like mega tanky. Right, it's 1500 HP, it's 12 armor, it's also 33% uh, magic resistance. So this is just uh, amazing for, for, your, for your tankiness and for your survivability. So always use this in team fights, And yeah, that is sort of the, the standard game plan for Lone Druid. You know, take out, uh, take out the tower in the mid lane, take out the top tower, and then take whatever other towers are available. Uh, take Roshan, and then you can go high ground. And Lone Druid obviously very good here at going high ground, because you get this reset on the bear, so you can sort of knock on high ground uh, twice. And obviously you do lots and lots of building damage, especially with this build. As a safe laner, you still probably want to take out the tower in your lane if possible. This is not uh, as important, so if you can't get the tower, that's fine too. But you know, around like uh, 8 to 10 minutes usually is when most carries just leave the lane. As Lone Druid, you can often stay in the lane a little bit longer because he's kind of a good hero to play the dead lane because it's fairly hard to kill, especially if you have like a point in Savage Row and True Form. Yes. So you can stay in the safe lane a little bit longer, but then eventually you still want to move towards these other lanes where you can just find the more high value tower. So, uh, the mid lane or the off lane and even though you're a carry you still want to be fairly accurate in the mid game you don't just want to like passively farm on lone druid the hero is supposed to be like a, a, a mid game beast uh, you don't want to take it to the late game but if you do have a, a hard time in lane and you're behind in farm you definitely want to take a couple of minutes just to to uh, catch up because an under farm lone druid isn't going to do anything pretty much you need your farm Right, so especially if you're like, uh, you haven't completed like a desolator yet or something and you're under farm, just complete the desolator and then try to do something with your team. Let's talk a bit about when you should pick Lone Druid when you shouldn't. So Lone Druid is a hero that has sort of fairly strong counters, but also counters some heroes fairly strongly. Probably your best matchup is against Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage is a hero that just likes to farm a lot. Likes to split push, likes to drag games out, but Lone Druid is just so good at just ending games early. 
And you might say, okay, Anti-Mage is so mobile, Lundra can never catch him. But like, who cares? Let Anti-Mage jump around. You're just going to take his buildings. And yeah, Anti-Mage is going to split push, but you just push so fast with Lundra that Anti-Mage is not going to have enough time to split push. He's not going to have enough time to come online, and he can't ever really kill you because you don't care that much about mana. You find him with him burning your mana. You have no mana pool, so his ultimate is not going to do anything against you. And in a head to head fight, it's just not that good against Lone Druid unless he's like a much more farmed. Darkseer, this is mostly about the lane. This Lone Druid is just a very good lane against Darkseer. But also later on, Lone Druid is well against Darkseer because Darkseer wants to make illusions of you, but you can't actually make bad illusions. And the illusions from the main hero are fairly weak, so you don't care about that too much. But the heroes that counter Lone Druid are heroes that sort of have either an earlier timing than him, like Huska. Is such an early game dominator that Lone Druid just doesn't really cut it against him. Also can disarm you and the bear just doesn't do anything against him. And you also have no burst damage on, on Lone Druid, so that's a, a problem against Huska. Uh, similar thing for Chen. He just has a very strong early game, just like Enchantress. These heroes with their, all their creeps is something that Lone Druid has a hard time dealing with. Because you're mostly about uh, single target damage. And yeah, these heroes have earlier timings than you do. And Enchant is also just very hard to kill because of her passive. Uh, Bristleback, similar thing. He's just is such a strong early game hero. You can't really lane into him. And his uh, quill stack damage just stacks up so much that even though Lundra is super tanky, you're not really going to have a good time against him. And Naga Siren is just, she doesn't care about right clicks because she has so much armor and all these illusions that are hard to clear for Lone Druid. And so that's why she's a hard matchup. As far as heroes that are good to play with Lone Druid, it's great to have heroes that can uh, buff up your bear. So we're playing with an Ogre, for example. His Bloodlust is excellent on the bear. Same with Invoker. You can get uh, that uh, huge buff onto the bear, all that attack speed. And damage from Alacrity is uh, very strong. Also, Invoker just is a good uh, core pairing with a Lone Druid. If you have like Lone Druid, safe lane, Invoker, mid lane, that works really well. Invoker is this sort of strong team fighter, more mobile hero that can do things around the map if you go for the cost uh, of X builds. And then Lone Druid is the one who just sort of provides the building damage, the pushing power, and that just works out really well together. Aura Hero is also strong to have, you know, something like a uh, Vengeful Spirit or like a Beastmaster. If there's nice aura to your bear, uh, that is all great. One thing you might think is great, but actually isn't, is Darkseer. So you might think, oh, put just put Iron Shell onto the Lone Druid uh, Spirit Bear, and it's going to be super strong. But the problem is, uh, you can't. Create Hero Lone. And you see, you can't actually cast this on the bear. You can cast it in the heroes and on creeps, but not on creep heroes. Not sure exactly why, but that's how it works. What you're looking for in teammates is, you know, buffs or auras for your bear. And then you just look for people who can, like, stun and initiate. And you do the sort of things that Lone Druid can't. It's also great to have heroes that can sort of find pickoffs around the map, which is also something Lone Druid doesn't really do. Um, so, yeah, there's a variety of different heroes you like to play with. Um, so one hero that does a lot of this, these things together is uh, Magnus. The Empower is actually a great buff for your bear. And then Magnus is also an initiator and just offers a lot of teamfight utility. That's a hero you always want to play with if you can. But heroes you want to avoid is these kinds of heavy farming carries. Like you don't want to be playing together with like a Medusa or an Anti-Mage or any sort of hero like that. Because you want to finish the game in the mid-game, ideally. Right? You want to snowball with this hero, you want to push towers and having this ultra late game carry in your team doesn't really fit well together with that game plan. As far as lane partners go, it doesn't really matter too much if you're in the safe lane. As you said already, Lone Druid is a fairly independent hero. He doesn't need too much help in the early game. So it's 
even perf perf perfectly possible to play lone room with like a greedy post five enigma that's going to be jungling half the time that's fine uh, you can you can have uh, even something like a techie who's not really a very strong hero in general i think but you know you're okay as lone room playing with a hero like that um Olga obviously a great, great lane support and uh, great for the Bloodlust, but we don't need a strong lane support if you're playing Lone Druid. You can even have something like uh, Brewmaster, for example, who's a fairly weak laning support, but if you have a 5 Brewmaster, he's always going to have a lot of imp impact in teamfights as long as he has his ultimate, so that's something that uh, you can think about. What you don't want is these very defensive supports, like an Omni Knight, or an ABBA or something. These are not going to be that great to get with the Lone Druid. And you also don't really want a support that's um, very focused on like getting kills in lane. Like, let's say you don't want to play with like, a support Visage because, you know, you, you want, uh, if you're playing Visage, you want like a kill lane. Or you don't really want to play with a hero like AA because AA wants to have a partner that's a stun. These are not the, the best setups. You also don't really want to play a Lone Druid in some sort of tri lane. Because as I said, you don't have much kill potential in the early game. You're just worried about just like outcrading the enemy and uh, farming, getting last hits, denies. You don't have much kill threat at the beginning, so you don't really want to run some sort of kill lane. So this is everything I know about Lone Druid condensed into one video. This is actually my most played hero of all time in Dota 2. So I've played this hero quite a bit and I can't wait for this hero to actually get buffed and actually be good again. Which, as I said, is almost certainly going to happen soon. So if you've enjoyed this video, please recommend it to a friend and also click on the next video here on the screen. And Obelisk Willing, I'll see you there.